Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks. Welcome to another edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host, meteorologist DT from weatherist.com. It's Monday, midday, 1230 here in the east, 930 Central Time. Usually I do This Week in Weather Sunday evening, but got held up doing a few things, so decided just, just to pack it in, get a good night's sleep. We also have a little bit of ice to watch here in the east in the Shenandoah Valley. So just decided to postpone it till midday uh, today. Hopefully most of you sick, twisted weather freaks out there have not... Uh, We'll all suffer massive disappointment and depression. We have another edition of This Week in Weather, so let's get right to it. Here in this edition, we'll be talking about the warmth and the storms, and then more cold coming up this week. Very changeable week here in the Midwest and the East Coast. Then Clipper Mania for New England, uh, and not a pattern which is really favorable for a big East Coast snowstorm at all here for the, first, for the next 10 days. Maybe something by the middle of February, February 10th or something to look forward to. And in fact, the whole pattern for the next first seven days of February is not looking that great at all. And we'll talk about why with some MJO issues. So we'll start out here by taking a look at what's actually going on. And of course, here we can see um, our big trough here in the east coast, uh, on the west coast, very deep trough right here. You can see that. And of course, if the atmosphere is pushing down here, you have to have a ridge here. And, of course, with this feature now leaving the coast, we've got very warm temperatures. You can see the warm air. See the oranges and the yellows and up in here? This is very warm temperatures for uh, January. And, of course, what happens is the trough rapidly moves through the plains in the Midwest. Uh, this is Wednesday, January 30th, and this is the new European from this afternoon. And we can see a lot of uh, warm temperatures ahead of the cold front right here. You can see the uh, front is uh, slicing uh, right through, uh, boom, like that through the Midwest, lots of super warm air up in here coming north. So January, so Tuesday will be increasingly warm day, so Wednesday, and the front arrives Wednesday night or early Thursday, depending on which model you want to take a look at. And the front has a lot of kick to it. This is the European now here from uh, early this morning, and you can see that as of uh, Wednesday evening, we let's draw our cold front in very nicely so we can see where it is. We have one cold front, the, Arctic, the strong cold front here, and another one or a surface trough right here. See it? So, and maybe even there's another front right this way here. So surface trough, here's front number one, and this is front number two, which is the strong Arctic cold front returning. Now all up in here, we've got super warm temperatures all up in there. You see that? And if we clear that out and then uh, run it again, we can see, look at the plus 12, 850s, all the way up into New England for Pete's sake. It's pretty impressive. So it's definitely going to be in the 60s and 70s in Virginia and North Carolina, maybe even eastern Maryland, maybe southern New Jersey, and 60s up into New York City and Boston, it looks like, definitely on Wednesday afternoon before the cold front arrives. And that's assuming that we get some sunshine in the morning and the storms arrive late in the day. Now, the model data does show there's a lot of activity with this front. This is the... Uh, uh, SPC Storm Prediction Center forecast for tomorrow. And we can see quite a strong uh, uh, signal here for us, lots of severe weather right here in the Delta. And that's pretty uh, impressive for late January. You don't see that a lot. And then um, this is the one for uh, the 3rd. This would be for, I guess, January 20th, uh, for Wednesday as well. And we can see, I've put the uh, cities in. You can see there's a uh, Roanoke, there's uh, Virginia Beach, Charleston, uh, up and down the uh, southeastern coast here. So a lot of uh, uh, possibilities here for more severe weather with the strong cold front arriving on Wednesday. And this is the GFS showing what it looks like at 7 p.m. on January 30th. Now, uh, this is showing pretty strong thunderstorms in here. Uh, this is not just regular rain. These are also some strong storms, a lot of vertical velocity in this area. And that makes sense. It's just, this is just a really strong warm, warm air mass, a very strong cold, cold front clashing into it. So I would be surprised if uh, we did not see thunderstorms and, and some pretty, pretty good ones here in Virginia, North Carolina, down into Georgia and South Carolina as well, maybe even Maryland. Now, by uh, uh, this is, I guess this would be, yeah, uh, by Thursday morning, the cold front is now pushed on through the east coast. You can see it very clearly it's pushed on through here. You look at all the yellows are now going this way, and here comes the cool air coming in here. Now, there's one disturbance in here to watch, and another disturbance in this area. And we can see, look at these blues coming southward. This is a very impressive new cold blast of Arctic air coming south. Now, let's take a look at the MJO here, and this is. Um, as of January 27th, yesterday, Sunday, notice what's happened here. Uh, the MJO is doing really fine uh, coming out here uh, th since early January. You remember, this is January 1st right here, and very weak, and then it got very strong, and now it went this way. See? 
But what's happened here is, look, it's taken this little, this is January 15th, and then for the past 10, 12 days, it's done this little dipsy doodle. It's been stalled right here. Now, if you recall, we talked about this possibility with the MJO in the previous uh, This Week in Weather discussions that it was going to stall somewhere in week in Area 7. Uh, and that appears to be exactly what's happened here. So kudos to the MJO models, which showed this stall happening. Now, if we go to the next slide. Um, here we go. Is this? Yeah, this is the next slide. Now, this is the European. <coughs> excuse me, still suffering from my bronchitis here a little bit. This is the uh, Sunday. This is the uh, valid for Sunday, and this is uh, from uh, again the zero Z European. We have a little bit of a disturbance here. Uh, this is for February second, right through here. Now. A couple of days ago, the European model was showing a pretty significant snowstorm February 1st or 2nd for the uh, Mid-Atlantic states and the Tennessee Valley. That has backed off of it. There is no indication that's going to happen now, so I have to downplay the threat for February 1st and 2nd. There may be a couple of clippers coming through here. This is the first one, which is showing up in the European, moving through the Midwest and probably going to bring New England and New York City some snow, maybe even eastern Pennsylvania, but nothing south of the Pennsylvania-Maryland border. And then... Beyond that one, uh, that clipper goes up in here. Let me, uh, you can see this is now February 3rd. You can see right in here, this is February 3rd. This is as of uh, 7 p.m. And we have this system, which was here, has now gone this way. But look, there's another clipper right here, and that's coming down this way. So it's clipper mania. And again, New England has not seen a lot of snow, neither Chicago. So all of these systems could bring them, you know, light to moderate snows here, which would be pretty good for those folks since they're in snow-starved areas. Now that system moves up uh, to the north. I do not know if this is correct or not. This is uh, 100. This is day seven. The European takes the system and goes like this. I think it's going to come down here. So I think this that solution for the Midwest is wrong. But that's what the Europeans doing. If the point is, there's another clipper, and then it moves east through into New England. You can see it here. Um, you know, Virginia, Kentucky, Tennessee, North Carolina. We see a brief warm up before more cold air comes in by February 5th. Well, that's what the European is doing from this morning, and uh, we can even see this uh, on the on the later on for day nine. Look, there's another clipper here. The one that was um, call it up here was over here, and then it was over here, and then here. Now it's here, and look, here comes the next system right there. That's coming down. So it's a clipper mania. Good, very good for snows. Potential for uh, Chicago and Detroit for uh, the northeast over northeast Pennsylvania, New York City into New England. Uh, nothing south of D.C., though, not in these sorts of systems. It's simply not strong enough or large enough, for that matter. Now, this is the uh, Day 9 European from this morning. This is the ensembles. And what this is showing is, you see the black line here? Let me highlight this so you can see the black line very nicely. See this line here? That's showing the polar vortex. That's the axis of it. Now, eventually what's going to happen here, what I'm concerned about in terms of getting a a milder pattern is that the system comes up this way and it comes this way. So in other words, the polar vortex is one of these, shaped west to east, which is what we saw earlier. All the cold air will be trapped up in Canada, and there will be no cold air in the central and eastern U.S. Now, we're not seeing that yet, but I'm a little worried that the, vo that the uh, a polar vortex might do that. So let me highlight it again. You can see it. See this feature here? There it is right there. And like I said, it might swing up this way, and it might swing down this way. We do have a little bit of blocking, which would, looks like it would prevent that from happening. But it is something to be a little concerned about, that the middle, after the middle of February, it might turn uh, milder. I don't think so, but I'm not con confident of it yet. Let's take a look at the teleconnections here. Here's the Arctic Oscillation. And you can see it's not showing a whole bunch of nothing. We have a little negative, then it goes positive, and slightly negative, then slightly positive. Boring, not major any drops here at all. Uh, and we look at the, uh, this would be the NAO, and again, same sort of thing. Very minor movement, slightly ne neutral here, slightly positive here, then slightly negative there, and then neutral here. That's not a lot of movement. It's better than nothing, better being consistently positive, but, you know, we need to get a good snowstorm in the East Coast. You need to see this thing down in here. Down in here, we're not seeing that, not at all. So that kind of hurts a little bit. This is the EPO, the Eastern Pacific Oscillation. This is what causes the ridges to form on the west coast of North America. Now, so we know why this is important. When it's negative, we get a P and A. But what do we see? Slight negative here, slight negative here, positive there. 
That's nothing. That's very. That's an ordinary, inconsequential pattern. It's not a trough on the west coast of North America, but it's not a ridge either. It's neutral. Okay, and then finally, this is the P and A, and we can see here the P and A is doing this negative. Excuse me, negative right here. Then we get a ridge, and then it goes neutral or slightly, slightly positive. Uh, again, it's not a horrible pattern. It's just not good enough to get a really good snowstorm cooking on the East Coast. Let's take a look at the MJO. Remember we talked about this earlier? This is the actual track now, all the way through January, into the mid end of January here. And what we're seeing is the GFS ensembles take the uh, MJO, as you can see, into Phase 7 and then into Phase 8, eventually into Phase 7. But that's not until the middle of February, February uh, 11, actually. It doesn't get to phase eight, so that's that's a ways to go yet, and that's when things get really interesting. This is the uh, European and the European ensembles, and again, February 11th is when it gets into phase one and two. So late January, middle, early February, we get into phase eight, which is a really good snowstorm phase. This is the European operational run, same sort of thing. Here is the weekly European out to uh, the end of February to get to the phase three, which means that by the end of February, winter might be over, if that's correct. In the eastern United States. Here's the GFS ensemble. And if by the middle of February, it's stuck in the middle of phase eight, again, which is a good phase for East Coast storms. And there's the UCMET, same sort of thing. Now, what does this mean? Well, this here, let me call this up so you can write on it. Uh, this is phase eight. And what we're seeing is a huge blocking here, a big trough here, right there, centered over Virginia. This is a snowstorm pattern. If we get in the phase eight, that's what this is. We have to get it there. And it's not until the middle of February because of that little doohickey delay we had. See? And um, this is uh, phase one. And later, if we get into phase one here later on. And again, it's some blocking up here. But the patterns begin to break down. As you can see, it's not nearly as impressive as it is in phase one of February. This is the European ensemble from this morning. And we can see that there's some sort of disturbance here. We have a bit of a ridge. We have a very split flow here. See the flow going this way. And then we have this disturbance doing this. So this has potential February 10 or 11. And that would make sense given what we're seeing here, phase 8. And phase here in phase 8, February 11. See that? That would make sense. So we are getting some sort of matching here a little bit. And then if we look at the CFS in the week 3 and week 4, over here, of course, this is a uh, uh, let me call it up. This is week three. See it right here. And this is week four. See it right there. And we can see, um, again, significant, still more troughing in here, uh, more high latitude blocking. So a fairly good looking pattern into most of February. And we can see our temperatures are cold in the eastern United States. Not severely cold, but cold. And we do. We are getting signal here for some precipitation here in the week along the uh, east coast. You see that right along the east coast. This would be February 11 to the 17th. There you go. Remember, we saw before that there might be something if we can call it up back in here. This is February 10th. So by the time this system were to get to the east coast, it might be 13th, 14th, or 15th, and that kind of, kind of matches this. See, kind of. So we'll see if it actually works out. We don't know yet, but maybe it does. At any rent, that's how things, I believe, stand. Uh, this is Meteorologist DT with another edition of This Week in Weather, and I'll catch you soon.